It's still TV3 New Day and we're approaching December. And so even ahead of the Christmas celebrations, we also have a day that celebrates agriculture in the country, which, by the way, contributes heavily to our GDP as well. And so it is, of course, necessary that we discuss it. And in the studios today, we have Dr. Nura Giel. Giel, okay. So he's the Minister of State for Agriculture at the Ministry and also Chairman National Farmers Day Planning Committee. And I know that there is a major celebration that is coming up, of course, to celebrate our farmers. But even before that, our media has been inundated with a lot of news uh, concerning the challenges faced by some of these farmers and also by the agricultural sector as well. And so it's necessary that we discuss all of that. And so good morning and thank you for joining me. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. You're doing fine? Yes. Even with all the challenges? Challenges are there, and that is why we must be there. That's why if we must be no there. If there were no challenges, I would not be sitting here. Yeah, that's so true. So we, we are ready to confront all the challenges. Let's talk about the rice glut. And, you know, this issue has been ongoing for a while. The inability of farmers to find, you know, um, the right places to store their produce. We're producing more rice this time around, but yet... Ghanaians are not consuming as much Ghanaian rice as possible. Uh, we seem to prefer the foreign rice, which has been a problem for many, many years. But w now we have the opportunity to consume our own rice, but unfortunately, we don't have the opportunity to store them. Why is that so? Well, thank you. I think that we must first approach it from the um, definition of glut. Yeah. And the way everybody is saying there's mm -hmm, a glut. Mm -hmm. When you have so much at the harvest time, it yeah. is expected. It's always been so. This is the period for harvesting rice mm. all through the country. Mm -hmm. Now, the farmers are confronted with an increase in rice production mm -hmm. as a result of planting for food and jobs and, jobs, yes. and whatnot. Yes, uh, we have made arrangements for that. Mm -hmm. And you are aware we went and cut the sword and started the construction mm -hmm. of 80 warehouses across the country. Yeah. That was to supplement what we already had as store, store mm -hmm. places. But nevertheless, even if these were all completed, that doesn't rule out the fact that we will still have glut at harvest time. Okay. When you talk of a total glut, that is if throughout the year there is too much surplus mm -hmm. that we cannot handle, okay. that is what we will talk about. But right. as of now, the farmers are still harvesting. What I understand happened in the valleys up mm -hmm. the north mm -hmm. well the, the rains were too heavy this year yeah and you remember the vice president even flew to uh the upper east region mm -hmm. to give relief items and whatnot because as at october mm -hmm. ending and even part of uh, november the rains were still coming and in in torrential rains the place was all flooded mm -hmm. rice is grown in lowlands in the valleys yeah what I know the problem is, because we've gone there to see. All right. What the problem is, is that as the combine harvester, the machines are harvesting, or the human beings are harvesting, normally they harvest up to a point. You can't be carrying every back, back to back. the road. Yeah. So you have to let them stay on the field for some time. Mm -hmm. And after harvesting, they go around to collect. Yeah. But in this case, the fields were wet. And the farmers could not let the rice stay on the field mm -hmm. because they will be absorbing water. And all the farmers in that place, large parts of uh, valleys, it was difficult for them, all of them to get people to convey them at, at the, time. the time. So yeah. there was a total chaos. Yeah. That I agree. So we are saying that the rice is there, that farmers are crying, well, we don't have market. That is because the rice is not so dried. And the weather wasn't so good to dry yeah. them. Normally... The, every year we have this kind of thing happening. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But the moment they harvest, they have a place to dry. Yeah. This year they were not having a place to dry. So every farmer at once wanted to sell the rice off their hands. Exactly. So that they don't have this drying problem. Now the market queens and those who go to buy the rice took advantage of that and dictated a price. Exactly. You see, we put the rice in a size four bag. Mm -hmm. These women send a size five bag and want to turn the rice into it. So you, they were turning three of the farmer's rice into two of theirs. Yeah. Meaning they are buying one bag short. And that's why the price collapsed. Mm -hmm. But the farmer did not have a way to keep the rice within those few weeks. And that was the problem. 
But nevertheless, I agree that we have got an increase in production of rice. Yeah. But the consumption of local rice is not increasing at the same pace as uh, the, the production is increasing. Mm -hmm. But we have a structural problem in our agriculture in this country. One of it is that if you go to countries like Germany, mm -hmm. the processing site is under agriculture. All right. So we start from procuring the inputs to production, to marketing, to storage, and to the processing, all, right. all under us. But if you look at our policy for planting for food and jobs, it ends at storage. Mm. That's why we are doing the warehouses. Okay. Once it comes to processing in Ghana, it is in the realm of Minister of Trade and Industry. Is that a problem? It, it, it's, it's, a it, it's a problem because okay. we get our money and decide that we are going to produce. Mm -hmm. So some other fellow should be building the, this thing, buying rice mills and all those exactly. things. Exactly. But so, if they don't see that as an importance like you do... Yes, we've been trying problem. to link up. But industry is not reacting as fast as we are doing with our inputs. Mm -hmm. So farmers are increasing the production. If you come to tomato processing, yeah. rice yeah. milling, and all those things, they are not under agriculture. Yeah. So we, have, we, we can't go beyond our mandate. And our mandate is up to the storage. Hmm. That is uh, one of the major problems. But of course, if, if I mean, government is aware of this. You work in government as well. And so I, I, I would assume that you have tried to have a dialogue with, you know, Ministry of Trade. Even to this point, I know that, you know, there was an expectation that we will have excess production of rice and all of that. Yeah. There should have been a conversation. We've had how many years of wanting to deal with the same problem over and over. And it looks like we always wait, and when it gets bad, that's when everybody jumps on it and keeps talking about it. But there should have been something put in place to ensure that when it comes to processing, and it comes to even um, enlightening Ghanaians especially about the consumption of rice, if you just produce it and expect me to get up and just consume it, I, I probably won't, especially when I'm used to something that I feel is more quality, which is a problem because even on the markets, they have the foreign rice and the local. Mm. And nobody wants to buy the local because we're not convinced about the quality, first of all. Shouldn't there have been a continuous dialogue trying to ensure that we don't get to this point? There is a continuous dialogue. And that is why in the design of our policies, you, people have failed to see the link between the government priority projects. Mm. But there is a direct link. That is why they launched the One District, One, one factory. factory. And that is based on the, the One District, One, one Factory a lot of it, I will say more than 50% to 70%, is based on agro-processing. Mm -hmm. Because what is the raw material we have yeah. in Ghana for processing? Yeah. So we are the main beneficiaries. But unfortunately, it's a private sector activity. Government motivates. You see, government does not go like we are supplying fertilizer. Yeah. Yeah. Government will only wait if somebody from that district, where they are growing rice, and that should be the work of the district chief executive, and all the businessmen from that area mm -hmm. who will see an opportunity. If we are growing too much rice and we have no processing factories, let me go in there as a business. Okay. If somebody applies to set up a factory there, government is going to give him a stimulus package, mm -hmm. helping mm -hmm. him to this thing. But yeah. if a private man doesn't come out, government cannot just go and build a factory. All right. You know, we, otherwise we'll run into the same problem as uh, we had at uh, Bojwasi. Yeah where government invested mm -hmm. and for starch production, and yeah. you know the story yeah. of that factory. Yeah. We have the sugar factory Commander at Commenda. Yes. You know the story about mm -hmm. it. So it is the private sector that is not reacting enough, and government is doing everything to motivate, even with the motivation packages. You see, in Ghana, most businesses will want the thing to be done and handed over to them. Yeah. But that investment is not catching up with our policies. But we are in continuous dialogue with the uh, this thing. Because they're the scared. I mean, the banks are saying that what's the surety that I'll even get my money back if I invest in a small scale farmer? Because I, I can't guarantee anything. And so instead of investing in you, I'd rather invest in someone that I know I can get the returns in maybe six months, one year, and all of that. So that's a problem. You know the problem very well, and we are at, at the top of the problem. Okay. Uh, now. This, uh, risk mitigation. Mm -hmm. We have what we call GESAL. Okay. It's, it's a, a tool now. Money has been given by the African Development Bank, taken mm -hmm. by Ghana government, mm -hmm. and is now lodged with the Bank of Ghana. Mm -hmm. We have a chief executive now, 
and is starting operation this year. Okay. That money has been lodged to mitigate against risks. So any bank now that lends into agriculture, 66 mm -hmm. percent, 66.6 percent yeah. of your lending portfolio mm -hmm. is guaranteed from that fund. All right. So it means if you are not able to recover that money, that 66 percent, you will go you to go, the Bank of Ghana okay. and then they will give you that money. All right. So that thing has started operation this year. And that's why you hear banks like ADB, who have moving away from agriculture now say, we are going We're to lend more than 50% of our portfolio yeah. to agriculture. So at least Nana Kufwadu has made strides mm -hmm. in trying to make sure that a lot of investments come to agriculture and okay. not just the government planting for food and jobs. The private sector is now guaranteed that the banks will lend to them and their money is not at risk. Let's talk about younger people now, because when we think of agriculture, <coughs> we think of some farmer in some village who's growing tomatoes and pepe, and, you know, when it's ready, he sends it to the market to sell. And so a lot of people, unfortunately, don't find it attractive. Um, you know, we've had some young people who have ventured into agriculture, and they are there spearheading the campaign for more young people to go in there as well. What exactly has government been able to do in order to ensure that this attractiveness happens so that more young people invest in agriculture as well as we celebrate Farmers' Day? Well, we have got a youth in agri program. Mm -hmm. A lot of the rice that is sold, the local rice, it's for their rice yeah. is being grown by the youth in agri program. Okay. And it's distributed in Accra widely. But how many? How many youth, I mean? How many youth yeah. are in there? Yeah. Well, we don't have, it's, it's something we are encouraging. Mm -hmm. You see, you can't force them. And you know in Ghana, anyone who goes to school and has gone to, has the benefit to go to polytechnic mm -hmm. or to the university, thinks that, oh, I'm out of farming. Exactly. And Which is the problem, because that means that we haven't preached the message well, have we? We, we are preaching the message, but we don't have ambassadors. I hope you'll be an ambassador. You see, mm -hmm. when you are in a school, for example, in the university, yeah. you have a girlfriend. And then you are moving together, you wish to marry. Mm. Tell me how many of the ladies at the final year that you tell your girlfriend that I'm going to Afran Plains, I'm going to this bush mm -hmm. to settle and farm. You don't have to settle there to farm, do you? you there do. are lots of people who have Abs farms. Absentee farming. At least you travel there every week. So maybe all weekend you are there no, and then you come no, back. No, no, no. If you really, you see, Development, industrialization, yeah. and buildings have pushed agriculture into the hinterland. If you have to travel there every week, the cost of traveling mm -hmm. alone is increasing the cost, which you reflect in your rice, in the maize, and what not you eat. Yeah. And at, at the same time, the people you employ there, you can't just load an articulator full of fertilizer mm -hmm. and go and give it to people and say, apply it should. on my land. Yeah. They're going to divert it. You have it. to have eyes on it. Yeah, yeah you have to has, have, have eyes, eyes on it. Yeah. So we want to go after the model of the Western world and even like what is happening in China. Mm -hmm. You build a small house in your farm. Okay. And stay there. But what I'm saying is that your partner will not be ready to go there. So if your partner is already, leave your partner. Leave your partner. Yeah. Well, this that's is about I say, business. I want you to join as an ambassador mm -hmm. to educate the youth. This is one of the problems, social problems, because you see, when you finish school, there's no water mm -hmm. in the place where you are going to uh, exactly. make the farm. Exactly. Irrigation is a problem. There's no, there's no electricity mm. on the place. One man, you cannot bring electricity to where your farm is. Mm. These are all the problems, and that's why we are saying that agriculture moves after some basic infrastructure has been put there. That there is a road, mm -hmm. that there's a clinic, mm -hmm. because if you go there, you will surely have children yeah. and those things. There's a school and all those things. You see all the farms that were pig farm and whatnot. Mm -hmm. They all gone. They were doing it. So we are saying that it is something that we have to do all right. in concert with the other sectors. All right. The roads, the electricity, mm -hmm. the water. Otherwise, forcing the youth to go to the village and stay in the night. Yeah. Is he going to use a candle or a lantern? Exactly. You know, when he himself is sick, mm -hmm. the nearest place may be some 50, 100 kilometers. 100 kilometers away. Yeah. All right. In celebration of um, Farmers Day as well, the question is, <coughs> why are farmers, why are some farmers still very poor? 
Well, because they feed us. This one. They sh they should be the ones even benefiting. That's more. exactly the, the answer you've given. Mm -hmm. Why are farming so poor? Mm -hmm. Because everyone, the basic necessity of life, mm -hmm. we say should not be so expensive. Mm -hmm. That's why water is about the lowest cost. Air is free. We don't free. even pay for that. Yes. We want housing to be so low, mm -hmm. even though in Ghana, because of advance and whatnot. But housing should not form too much of your salary. Yeah. And everybody thinks or believes that food must be something, a necessity. Everybody must eat every exactly. day. And because of that, food is so cheap. If you take your monthly salary mm -hmm. and see how much you give to food, it's only maybe about 10%. Yeah. But it is on that one the farmers will live on. Sometimes when you yourself, you are buying tomato at some periods of the year, you see you go a whole bowl full of tomato, they're saying two cities or five cities. Mm -hmm. But once you are happy going with that tomato to your house to cook, it's the farmer who is suffering. Mm -hmm. And that's what it amuses me. We are driving along the way and we go and see a woman sitting down selling pineapple, tomato, mm -hmm. plantain, mm -hmm. and she says five cities for a bunch of plantain. Yeah. And yeah. we are still saying a la barca. Mm -hmm. We still want them to reduce. But we come to the stores here, and then you are picking. And we are picking it for w w one the, finger for maybe five cities. <laughs> one finger for five cities. Yeah. You see, yeah. that is why farmers are poor. Because there are too many. Millions of farmers are producing. Mm -hmm. When you take, it's in economics. If you take any product, very few people are producing and can dictate their prices. Yeah. When you come to agriculture, there are millions. There are too many, yeah. And producing the same products. That's why we should protect so them. So, competition. Mm -hmm. No, but we tried, even in Akumada, where they produce tomato, the women come from Accra and Kumase mm -hmm. and say they'll buy the crate like for 30 cities. Mm -hmm. You bring the farmers together and say, 30 cities is too low, don't sell. Mm -hmm. A farmer will come from behind, and sell signal the, yeah. the woman, oh, you let's go to the house, don't mind them. They are in luxury. They have money. That's why they don't want to sell. Mm. And they will go and sell the thing at 20 cities. Because they also need that money to be able to buy their daily needs. So mm. farmers are really suffering. And that's why the whole wealth is not only in Ghana. The whole wealth, yeah. in every economy, farmers are the lowest earners. Yeah. Yeah, that's very sad. And we hope that, of course, um, another way by which we can tackle some of these challenges is by banning some of the, you know, products that are imported um, into the country. Rice, we have tomatoes coming from other <coughs> countries as well when we produce so much of it and they are left to rot, you know, uh, on the farms as well. And so I really hope that as we are celebrating Farmers' Day this year, these are some of the things that we'll be focusing on. But tell me about the celebration. What's the focus? That is enhancing the small-scale farmer mm -hmm. uh, for agribusiness development. Okay. This one is trying to throw light and educate Ghanaian farmers that we should not take farming as a culture and as a tradition. Okay. We should move and modernize farming. Mm. Apply digital technologies and all those things. Apply the new inputs that are developed through technology. Mm -hmm and farm as a business, okay. not just farming as a way of life. Mm. Uh, they should farm as a business. Okay. So at the place there, we're going to have a lot of exhibition, about five-day exhibition, where all the present current technologies in terms of machinery, in terms of the agro inputs, fertilizers, and other um, inputs will be exhibited mm -hmm. so that farmers will be educated that, look, go in, and farm as a business to make money. Yeah. But not just farming to feed the family okay. and sit down poor. That's okay. the focus. And what's the plan for the celebration? What's happening? Do we have a number of days that we'll be, you know, dedicating or are we only celebrating on Farmer's Day? What's, what's the plan? No, we have a, it's a five day period. We're okay. starting uh, on the 2nd. Mm. There is supposed to be an opening ceremony. All right. And the exhibition will start. Okay. Where we'll be exhibiting all the technologies and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of it is that since the 2017, we've introduced what we call regional days. Mm -hmm. We want each region to show the uniqueness of their own agriculture. All right. The crops that are produced differ depending on the agroecological zone. Yeah. Yeah. And we started since 2017. Mm -hmm. 
So each region will have a chance to showcase their products, showcase their culture. Mm -hmm. and, and so we've arranged that on the second, there will be five regions All right. showcasing. All right. On the third, you will have six regions yeah. showcasing. Okay. And then on the fourth, we have another five regions. The regions are now 16. Mm. Yes. Mm. So they've been divided and they will showcase uh, their culture, their products, and everything. And where is all this happening? In Ho. Okay. At the Jubilee Park. All right. That's where it will happen. Mm. And then the, the last day, the fifth, that will be the, we, we have a farmers forum organized by the Agricultural Development Bank. Okay. All the award winners who have come from all over the country, they will be taken through various topics, discussing, some of it is financing agriculture. Okay. So to expose farmers to how they can finance uh, their, their farm businesses. Okay. Then we have other topics that will come in the fish, fishery sector mm. and then tree crop sector. Okay. Because what we're trying to say is the way we are farming, if you are farming rice or maize or beans, this is an annual crop. Mm -hmm. But it's good for every farmer to try to take a portion of his land and plant and a plant. tree crop. Yeah. So that we don't depend on only cocoa. Mm -hmm. There will be very soon, you will see cashew with blooming. Mm -hmm. We have mango. Yeah. And then we have rubber and all those things that farmers can plant. Okay. So that in the dry season, there is still work for them to do. All right. You see, it's only in agriculture we expect people to work for five months, for six five, months, yeah. and feed for 12 months. Mm -hmm. We, the workers, they pay our 12 months to feed for 12 months. But agriculture, you work only during the rainy season. Mm -hmm. And you use that money you earn to feed exactly. for 12 months. All right. And that is the reason for the low earnings in agriculture. All right. Because your little money... You have to spread it. All right. So yeah. it's open to anybody at all? Anybody can attend? Everybody. O open to everybody. Everybody. Open okay. to everybody. Okay. Every there will be a crowd there. Normally, we have the development partners. We have all the agribusinesses mm -hmm. assembling there to make exhibitions. Okay. Government officials and the private sector in general. Definitely. Yeah. All right. Well, looking forward to it, and I hope that you will be there as well um, as we celebrate Farmers' Day. I've been speaking to Dr. Nura Giel. He's the Minister of State for Agriculture at the Ministry of Agriculture and also Chairman, National Farmers' Day Planning Committee. And so thank you so much for your time on the show.